morning, all give a call the Board of Public Works and Capital Assets, meeting the order of May 14, 2024. Roll call. Gail is here. Arnecki here. Seifert here. Legale here. Thank you all. Moving on, uh, item number three is approval of minutes from the April 9th, 2024 meeting. Any notations, corrections, deletions, comments? Otherwise, I'll take a motion. Seifert moves to approve the minutes of April 9th, 2024. Legale seconds. Roll call. Gill, aye. Bernanke, abstain. Seifert, aye. Gill, aye. Great, thank you. Uh, item four is the review of common call to actions, real public works, and capital assets. Oh, great. Any questions, Francesca? All right. <clears throat> Moving on then, uh, item six would be consider a motion to approve the purchase of the Pavajet Mini Paver. Matt, or is who's got that one? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. You know, these are cards for the members of the board. Oh, you think so? <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> All right, yeah, item five then is to consider a motion to approve two, a purchase of two vehicles from Holtz Motors. Good morning, I'm Darcy Dubois, health officer, um, seeking approval to purchase two vehicles for the health department um, using our health department ARPA grant funds. These, we currently have one vehicle in the health department that's nearing the end of its life. We have some grant funding available through the end of this year that is approved to purchase vehicles, so want to take advantage of that and replace the vehicle while we can. The vehicles will be used for health department staff for many different community uh, functions. We do inspections of restaurants, hotels, pools, home visits with clients, clinics, community events. So staff are out and about frequently and would use those vehicles. We have met with a sales representative from Holtz Motors and plan to purchase the vehicles through that dealer using the state vehicle purchasing contract. Any questions that I can answer? I did have a question. Max and Andrew know you're doing this as a purchase yep. rather than the lease program? Yeah, so I ha we have spoken about it, and the reason we decided to do a purchase is because we have the grant funding to buy the vehicles outright versus having to budget that the lease amount every year, which would be more difficult with the health department budget. I'm just wondering, because I know we don't do the service that much. Right. Yes, we have spoken about it. Okay. As long as they... Anything else? I'll take a motion then on the item five. Seifert moves to approve the purchase of two vehicles from Holtz Motors in the amount of $68,500. Zarnacki will second. Roll call. Gail is aye. Zarnacki aye. Seifert aye. Gail aye. aye. Thank you all. Now we can do item six. Thank you, Darcy. Uh, which is the, consider the approval of a purchase of a Pavajet Mini Paver. That's, I'm assuming you, Matt, right? Yes. Yes, thank you, uh, Matt Trobotusky, Director of Public Works. Um, so the mini paper, what we're looking at is actually kind of a combination purchase between this item and the following item. Um, what we have currently is a 1999 um, patch truck that we utilize for potholes as well as some of our uh, patchwork repairs. Um, it's definitely an older older vehicle that's seen better days, um, and we'd like to get away from it. Um, it's, it's a larger, uh, larger uh, sitting high up truck, we'll call it. 
um, of climbing in and out of, which get, becomes difficult when you're trying to do multiple potholes per day. Um, and we looked at a more efficient and actually what we would see as a better finished um, finished surface product um, in using a mini paver such as this um, that we were able to demo with the city of Lake Mills had one of these units available. It's an attachment for a skid steer um, and it worked really well. They demonstrated just simply some old millings that they had for us they were able to put out because this was in early, well, late winter um, that we visited their site. So we got to see how that, how, that or how that was utilized and it did a really good job in doing that. Um, so it would give us a nicer riding surface when we do patchwork on streets as well as at the end of drive approaches when we're doing culvert repair work or culvert replacement. Um, and then in addition, this unit will also allow us to do um, some shouldering work as well, um, which would be helpful in those operations along um, so many of the roads that we have without uh, curb and gutter. Um, so this is uh, really just a single source, um, this unit that we were able to find. Um, and it uh, looks like the, the dealer is out of Illinois, so relatively close by. It is, it is manufactured overseas. Um, however, um, we felt, felt confident enough in being able to get the parts um, from, this, from this company to move forward if we, if we run into any issues. So um, yeah, we were looking for the board to consider this purchase. Um, we had 50, uh, 55,000 was the quote we received. We had $103,000 that was approved in the CIP budget for 2024. Uh, for this item as well as the following item, which um, is an asphalt recycler uh, hot box trailer. Uh, but between the two items, we still come within the $103,000 budget amount. Questions for Matt? All right, let's Good. make a motion then. The, the You're going to get rid of the old equipment? Yes. Yep. We'll put the other, the old equipment on probably like Wisconsin surplus auction. Um, I mean, it's still, it's still serviceable. It still runs. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get at least some kind of return sale. Thank you. I'll need a motion on item six. Uh, Zarnick, you'll make a motion to approve the purchase of a Pavajet mini paver. MG7 from High Tech Equipment Incorporated in the amount of $55,000. Kelly, second. Roll we'll call Gills, aye. Zarnacki, aye. Steepard, aye. Kelly, aye. Thank you, Matt. And then item seven, that is considered purchase of a four ton Falcon asphalt recycler and hot box trailer from Midwest Paving. Yes, thank you. And as I was mentioning, this is kind of the second piece of that. This would be utilized for uh, doing our pothole, pothole repairs, which actually will be a little bit more maneuverable as well. Um, as far as getting to pot, um, getting to the pothole repairs, um, it is a four-ton unit, so it's similar to the, what we have on the existing truck. So we're not losing any capacity in that regard. Um, we did receive three quotes, um, the lowest being the NASPO uh, bid pricing through Midwest Paving for forty-four thousand seventy dollars and eighty cents, um, and that, along with our, our previous purchase, would fall within the budget for twenty twenty-four. Um, the only other additional item that we'll we'll get along with that would be um, we'll probably get a tarp uh, automatic tarp roller system for one of our dump trucks that we'll utilize for uh, the mini paper. Um, so we should uh, everything should still uh, be within the budget that was was allocated. Any discussion, comments, questions? Let's take a motion on item seven then. Uh, Zarnick, you'll make a motion to approve the purchase of a four-ton Falcon as asphalt recycler and hot box trailer for Midwest Paving Equipment Incorporated in the amount of $44,070.80 through the NASPO bid contract. Seifert seconds. Thank you. Uh, roll call, Gill is aye. Zarnick, aye. Seifert, aye. Kelly, aye. Okay. Item eight then is to consider uh, approval of the lowest qualified proposal from Pro Widcare to restore and preserve all the log cabin in, at the museum on a time and materials basis at a total estimated cost of $56,302 and authorize the city attorney to prepare and enter into a contract with Pro Widcare based on approved proposal. Yes, thank you. Um, we had put we had put this. How uh, did you get to manage this? What's that? Yeah, I, I got <laughs> I got <you>? lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, Public Works did work with engineering as well with um, Matt Sullivan, the city engineer, and we put together uh, a request for a proposal for this project. Um, I, just, I, know, Bobby, I don't know if you guys, this is for the, uh, we, we call it the Historical Society, just so you know, all right. 
It's not. It doesn't say that. Yep, and we so we put this out for proposal. Um, we were pretty. Uh, I mean, it was guessed that we'd probably only get the one proposal. I know the historical society had looked at uh, soliciting proposals in the past year just to see what was out there, and uh, Pro Wood Care was one of the two that provided quotes. Definitely the more, um, we'll say, professional of the two. Um, definitely, um, this is something they work on quite a bit, especially throughout the Midwest and really the the country um, as a whole. Um, and they came, b they came back around, and of course it's a year later, so they did see a little bit more um, rot and, and everything else, which is to be expected as, as time moves on. Uh, fortunately, as they went and assessed it um, with all the work that they're looking to do, they were still coming uh, under what we had budgeted of $60,000. Now it is, of course, a time and materials project. It's, it's an interesting project, just like opening up any wall in a, in a building. You don't know what you're gonna run into, especially here. They're, they're not going to know what they'll find necessarily once they get going, so it likely is going to have, I would assume, a change order once they come back with it. So I'm guessing the 56000 probably won't be the end cost. Um, and the other piece of that is, obviously, you can't go to Menards and, and buy the lumber and, and put that in, so they need to search and look for um, for the logs to be able to replace the ones that need to, need to be fully removed and come out. So um, they met on site. They were the one, again, the one bidder, we'll call it, that submitted a proposal. Um, they were the only ones that were at the mandatory meeting and to look at the project again. Um, they are relatively local. They're out of Germantown, so there's not really a lot of cost associated with their mobilization and travel time. Um, and they're reputable in the sense they've been around for quite some time and they've, this is kind of their specialty or it's kind of a niche, niche uh, type of project that we're looking at. So um, we're asking the board to consider the, approving the proposal Again, on a time and materials basis, but for fifty-six thousand three hundred and two dollars was the proposal's estimated total. Bob, anything? You got a business on the side here, Bobby? Oh, just yeah. looking them up online to see what they're. <laughs> um, Matt, I did have a question for you. So you say this is a time and materials, and like I said, it could be how and they would pension did this in a change or so they would I can't foresee to just stop working for a month and be on the new they assume they'd get paid for a reasonable over overages yep yep they would reach out and they would contact uh, either myself or Matt Sullivan and we would discuss it and meet out there with them and figure out what what's going on and make sure that it is reasonable and necessary um, and then move forward with that and then we would come back to the board with any uh, with any changes Plus, yeah, I have a question. Is this cabin owned by the city or is the county involved? It is, it is exclusively owned by the city. Yep, both the property and the buildings, and all the buildings, including this one, are owned by the city. Okay. Yep, it was deeded from the county. The records looked like it was to the historical society, but ultimately it, it is um, city property. Can't get the county to help contribute to the repairs? I mean, we can certainly try, but I don't know. I know this was, it was moved back in 1978. Um, and I don't think there was any, any didn't seem like there was any language in there that, that they were gonna kind of continue on with any type of responsibility for it. I don't need to ask you. <laughs> they wouldn't be doing anything for free. <coughs> All right, if you're good on that, I'll take a uh, motion on item A. Steepert moves to approve the lowest qualified proposal for pro wood care to restore and preserve the log cabin at the museum on a time and material basis at a total estimate cost of $56,302 and authorize the city attorney to prepare and enter into a contract with pro wood care based on the approved proposal. Galley second. All in favor? Gills aye. Karnacki aye. Seepert aye. Galley aye. Thank you. Item I, nine is to consider approval of final payment for the South 13th Street Hydrant Relocation Project to UPI LLC in the amount of $10,112.90. Michael. Right, right on the head. Yeah, it's just a final payment for that construction project. That was going on. 
Any questions, Mike? All right, big motion there. Fred? Mike, I have a question. Yes, sir. This is strictly on 13th Street between Drexel and Fuchs. Yes. Zarnicki will make a motion to approve the final payment for the South 13th Street Hydrant Relocation Project to UPI LLC in the amount of $10,112.90. Deeper seconds. We'll call Gills aye. Zarnicki aye. Seepert aye. Aye aye. Thank you. Item 10 is a motion, uh, consider a motion to approve final payment for the 2023 Sanitary Rehab Project to Visu Sewer in the amount of $13,000. $480.84. Uh, yeah, this, the same thing. This is just a final payment for the sanitary rehab project uh, that we do every year. Uh, one that came out successful, worked out well. And Questions? No. Motion on 10. Valley moves to final payment. project. Zarnacki second. We'll call Gills and I. Zarnacki aye. Deeper and I. Aye aye. Thank you. Item 11 is to consider uh, the approval of sanitary sewers connection agreement at 1834 East Oakwood Road. This one is quite interesting. So a sanitary sewer connection agreement or, or water, but typically sanitary sewer connection agreement will be used in a case where public sewer is not available to a property but is close typically on a, on a corner or very close to a property that that next property then can connect on a temporary basis until the gravity sewer gets extended uh, at some point in the future in this particular property the property was serviced back in 1990 with a grinder pump force main system to a building that existed on this parcel that no longer exists the building was a three unit apartment complex, if you will, very old building uh, that was connected in 1990. And since that time, the building has gotten torn down. The property was acquired by the county. The county has sold that property off to another individual. Uh, they now want to build a single family residence on the property and are looking for how to do that through sewer. So there is a gravity sewer solution to this property. It's intended to come from the east. Uh, at the time in 1990 and at the time the next door neighbor was built in 2002 that sewer had not crossed the railroad tracks yet so it really wasn't available uh, at this point it does service a subdivision to the south it is across railroad tracks it would could be considered available to this property the issues with the sanitary sewer the gravity sanitary sewer while considered more permanent is that it's going to cost uh, over $200,000 to install that and we pick up a maximum of three customers. So it's, it's not like you're ever going to make money back on, to pay off that sewer. This allows for the temporary connection. You, could, you can consider it as temporary reconnection to the force main on this property. They also agree that in the future, if that gravity sewer comes by, they'll disconnect their lateral and connect it to the new gravity sewer as per all of our connection agreements. Uh, this property can't directly reuse any of the any of the uh, force main or grinder pump system that was on the property at one time. It cut across an adjacent property for some unknown reason. So what they've agreed to do is they will extend the public force main east in Oakwood Road to get to this property and then they'll run a new grinder pump system and lateral out to it at that point. That's what the connection agreement allows. Uh, they'll pay the connection agreement they've actually already paid. They'll pay uh, the same cost that the special assessment would have cost this property. That's how connection agreements work. So to them, the cost is actually a little more to put in the, the force main system in that they agree to fund the force main system by themselves. They, are, they have to pay for the engineering design on that. And they've also contributed the $13,000 of what would be special assessment. We will hold in case there ever is a special assessment there that'll be applied towards that. This is a unique one. If I'm understanding right, there's no cost utility or city for this, then the, the property owners funding the entire bill. That's correct, okay. yes. Yeah. And there will be a development agreement uh, required for that short piece of forest main. And it would be dedicated to the utility or the city. You guys would have to 
after that? Yes, okay. that's correct. And I would say the interesting part about this force main is we, the rest of the force main that goes to the manhole, we don't, I don't want to say we don't consider ours. We consider it ours, but we have no records of it. When it was put in in 1990 to service that one three bedroom or three apartment unit, it was put in privately. We don't have any records of it. We don't know where it is. We don't know what size it is. We don't know the condition of it. Since that time in 2002, an adjacent home was allowed to connect to it. Uh, because it serves more than one property and is in the right of way, it is a public main. So we just, we have to assume it. We're hoping through this construction, we can get more information. They, they assume this is going to be done. I assume foundations dug or already laid. Oh, that, that I'm not aware of. I didn't know that. But either way, it would be either force main or gravity sewer. So gravity sewer takes a little bit longer. That, that's, a, that's a good point. So the gravity sewer would be available fall, spring, fall of this year, spring of next year. This they could get accomplished and have it done by uh, fall of this. Sorry, let me take... The gravity sewer would be done spring of next year if we embarked on that. This could be done by fall, early spring of next year, or early winter. This this can be done a little bit quicker is my point. Is this sold, do you happen to know, is this sold off of the old Mellard Creek development or is this a standing a standalone lot? It was a standalone lot that was owned by Country Creek, owned by that same developer. Yeah, it was part of that development, but it was an individual. And there is room for Per the original plan, there is room for two more lots on Oakwood Road uh, east of this. County owned it, but I guess I'm not. Impact of the utility, nothing at this point. So the do we, do we have any, any, any engineering effort involved in this? Yeah, there'll be some, yeah. It, it won't be massive. The problem is, is you're perpetuating this force main system that don't know much about and, and quite frankly don't want. There's a lot of liability to the utility if that breaks and we start you know, pumping that, or the grinder pumps start pumping that into the ditch or what have you. So no, the best solution would be a gravity sewer. But until that county does something. Well, no, we could do it now. It could be done now and special assessed uh, to the county, special assessed the next two property owners over. It's just, it takes a little longer, costs an awful lot of money that we will never recover. And our special assessment rate doesn't allow us to recover the full cost of the project. Yeah. Seems like a workaround, seems like a good temporary solution. The, the developer, the, the property owner will hire a contractor. What if it was just cost? I don't have an estimate. Well, that solves the problem like, temporarily. I mean, thirty, forty grand. Yeah, it won't be. It won't be horrible. I mean, you're talking a two-inch PVC line. Oh. I don't know the exact distance, but but if it goes oh. 100 feet, 150 okay. feet, it's, it's not really that long. I was just thinking, it's not a particularly long. Right. Anything else? Uh, I'll take a motion on 11. Seifert moves to approve the sanitary sewer service connection agreement at 80, 1834 East Oakwood Road. Zarnak yield second. <clears throat> Roll call. Gail is aye. Zarnak aye. Seifert aye. Scali aye. Great. Item 12 then is to consider approval of utility vouchers in the amount of million two hundred and seventy three thousand one hundred fifty five dollars twenty seven. Questions? Motion then on 12. Zarnacki will second. We'll call Gail's eye. Zarnacki eye. Seaford eye. Kelly eye. Uh, 
Item 13, Francesca, anything else? Administrative operations, or is that you, Mike? Sorry. I, I don't have anything notable. Notable. And there's no progress update on the, nothing meaningful on the Franklin? Uh, I am working on, with our rate consultant and our uh, attorney, working on the draft contract to send to them. It's complex, so there's lots going on probably end of June, July, I would guess, when we submit that Franklin for them. It's just a slow process. To yeah. Dotting all the I's and T's. Great. Anything else? For Mike? Buddy? All right. That'll do. 14. Then I think... Yeah. Zarnacki will second. Uh, roll call. Yells aye. Zarnacki aye. Keep it aye. Aye.